Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Cole, welcome back to MotoGP 18, has Mario made an off-season move? He's moved from the KTM and the Avintia team alongside Diego Loy to one of the top three teams in the championship. The Earpard Racing team, which brought Danny Kent to the championship in 2015, won Mir to the championship in 2017. He's looking to bring Mario McDonald to the championship this season, his second year in Moto3 and he'll be alongside some heavy hitters in Nea Bestinini who's always been nailed there about around the championship and Della Portia very talented Italian so let's see what the San Marino rider can do in his debut with the team around the South International Circuit in Qatar let's see who goes Mario then for the first of three laps in qualifying Martin's at the top until a 7.3 no doubt that can be beaten. Good to see Rodis get out of the way of Mario as well into that first corner. Remember, it was a bit tougher for the Vientia machine. Let me get some more respect on Paul this year, pod and on a Honda as well. There's only two constructors left in Moto3 after the exit of Mahindra and with Peugeot. It's just Honda and KTM, and now he's ridden both in this championship. I didn't see Moto T teams already interested in Mario as well. It's crazy to see at the end of last season. But look at that, look how perfect this bike is already. Doesn't feel like it's going to lock up in the braking. Can ride the bombs perfectly. Rear's not stepping out so far, but again, it's just his first lap for Mario. He might have to change some of his leathers as well for the next race. Looking a bit out kilter, those boots. We go through this back straight. See the lights in the distance, a bit distracting halfway through to that. And then through this fast right hander. Taking all the curb, being so aggressive with the bike. But then that's what is downfall in Valencia in that final race of the season. Way too much curb. Through the right hand and that costs him potential second place to end the season. There's all maybe gone down too far gear there down to first. Maybe better in second. That's how we go down this front stretch which takes forever on these Moto3 machines. And Mario's smashing it already. 205.4 might have to change the difficulty a bit as Mayo almost two seconds ahead of everyone else. Martin in second, Bezek in third, Canet, DJ Antonio, Ramirez on the second row. Very impressive. And Rodrigo, Antone, and Mino. There's the next best year by Bachelini in 10th. Rivotto and Cornfad, Amazer, Abalona, and Della Porto on the fifth row. Almost four seconds slower than his teammate. And you've got Tuba, Arenas, and Suzaki, and Suzuki, Binder, and Alonso Lopez. And you've got Loy, ex teammate, on the eighth row alongside McPhee and Nura Din. And it's Masaki, Bulliger, and Yachenko with the tie rider and Foggia on the back row. So let's see if Mario can convert this pole into a debut win. So here's what Donald revving up at the start. Let's get underway for six laps here under the light. And that's a poor getaway. He's been jumped by Bezeki and Martin. Let's head towards the first corner. And it's like the Italians taking the lead. Ed Grassini rider who's been held up slightly. It's allowed McDonald to slide up down the inside. Into second. Oh, but has Martin got him back on the exit? He has. Look at McDonald over Martin. Loving this Leopard. Once again down the inside. As Bezeki leads. McDonald in second. Martin in third. Just as you expected. No connect. No DJ Antonio. No Bastianini. Did a portrait with insight. So a bit wide for McDonald. Look at Della Porte down in 14th. By now, but Arenas. There's Martin has a little look down the inside of McDonald. He runs slightly wide. 
for the right hander. And Lopez ahead of Zazaki. Oh, Madon running wide for the left hand. That's allowed Martin back by. Just some little mistakes on this opening out for McDonald. Maybe some nerves heading into the new season. You're on a fast bike, and especially after qualifying, having to perform. But he's all over the curb and very aggressive again. And Jorge Martin. They've got to watch out they don't battle too hard in these early stages. Let Bezeki get away. But still, there's six laps to go. Or just over. Five laps to go, should I say. And look at that run for McDonald. But do you find that out of the penultimate corner? He goes for the final corner a bit wide. Might allow Bezeki to get the slit stream as we head towards the start finish line. It's such a long run as well. You've got to watch out for this on the final lap. You want to get slip streamed heading towards the line. He's free to enter the Bezeki now with Martin, Mino, Rodrigo. Ran out the top head of Ramirez, Antonelli, Di Antonio, Canet, and Ortel. Sondora runs very wide in the first corner. Di Antonio ahead of Canet now for eight. Donald trying to hold off Bezeki. But he's run wide. Now Antonelli battling Canet. Arnold not having the time of his life down there. You've got Berger battling with Loy. Over 27. And there's any Bastion down in 11th. Kornfeld. You've got DJ Antonio up to 6th now ahead of Ramirez. Spending had a very good start to the season. Let's see if he can hold on to a top 10. In this opening race. Now Jakim Kornfeld ahead of Bastianini. What is happening to the other year Padrins? As the team just gravitated around McDonald in this off season. I mean you can see why when he's leading by half a second ahead of Bash ahead of Bezeki. With Bastianini down in 12. Then a Porter down in 14. Now once again McDonald running wide. I'm not sure he's hit an actual apex yet. Seems to be running wide everywhere, but he's carrying just speed through the corner. As we go for these fast right-handers. It's a bit like Moto GP's equivalent of that turn eight from Turkey. As oh, a warning there from McDonald. Once again, clipping a curve for a right-hander. He's got to watch out for that. That's his first warning in May. Get reprimanded if he does it again. So he's got to watch out for that, does McDonald. He goes out the final corner. Look how long that pit lane is as well to the right-hand side. You don't want to get a ride through in this race. You can see all the pits. All the teams set up with their pit. Gantries has seven tenths of a second lead for McDonald. As Martin does the fast at 206 for that. Now he's ahead of Bezeki into second. Could be a battle between Martin and McDonald. That's what we expect this season with Kinect throwing in. Unfortunately for the Australia Galitza ride, right? he's nowhere to be seen at the moment. But Martin around the second back of McDonald as he approached the halfway mark of this race in Qatar. What a dream this has been for the San Marino rider. Not the most impressive in the Red Bull Rookies Cup, but grabbed that victory in Misano. Made some teams take notice. Didn't want to stay in that championship to battle for it. Just wanted to step up immediately to Grand Prix motorcycle racing. Did that with a Vintia last season. His rookie season very up and down, especially in the first half of the year. But he got together. Near the halfway mark of the season. Goes to his victory at the Red Bull Wing. And then at the end of the season, a couple more victories had to the tally. Sixth in the championship. Well, his teammate Loy was struggling to be in the top 20 in the championship. And of course, every team in Moto3 took notice then. And even in Moto2, as you saw some of the low end teams, shall we say. So McDonald's sticking in Moto3, going for the championship. Wants to be one of those rare riders who's won at Moto3 or slash 125 level. 
at Moto 2 slash 250 level and then at Moto GP slash 500 CC level and only a very slept through slept band of riders can say they've done that of course the other McDonald Patrick McDonald is one of them this one all sets a 205.8 ridiculous I see your 206 but Martin I'm going to raise you a couple of tenths so you've got Alonso Lopez Head of Dale Porcher for 13th. No, Dale Porcher fighting back as we enter the second half of the race. I'm surprised the stewards aren't penalising McDonald for running wide there, going on to the, that green stuff. I guess they think that will cost McDonald time, but that seems to be his line through that. Doesn't seem to be costing him any time. But yeah, apart from good old Patrick McDonald. The likes of Mark Marquez, Valentino Rossi, at the top of my head, you have also won at every level. But of course, it's a very different era of Grand Prix motorcycle racing now, especially in the last decade once they've got rid of 250s and 125cc and made it Moto2 and Moto3. It's very much is now a ladder to MotoGP. It's not like it used to be before where Riders could make a career in all the categories. Perhaps, you know, most famously with the late Angel Nereto. You know, in those 50ccs, 125cc bikes, winning 12 plus 1 championships. You won't see the likes of that ever again, unfortunately, especially with the age limit now in Moto3. That's all, McDonald getting a bit leery on this fourth flat. The rear tire's definitely a bit more worn than the front. Go watch out for that. In the final lap of this race. I know riders do hang around in Moto2 for quite a while now. You see that Dominic Dominic Agata? I believe it's been there since the beginning. Thomas Lute he was until he stepped up to MotoGP recently with Mark VDS. But he's probably heading straight back down as well. After just the season. So you definitely do see riders hanging around in Moto2. You saw it with Sandro Cortese before he stepped to World Supersport. Same with Ant Rest before he went to Supersport as well. So you're definitely seeing Moto2 be a mix of veterans and then young up and comers and then the up and comers don't last long in there maybe two three scenes of that most like Tito about like your own Zarco well I say like your own Zarco actually took a while more like Dre Inoni, Paul Spargo, Mark Marquez, Mavic Finales, Alex Rins, Ron Mir he's going to be headed to the list when he steps up to Suzuki alongside Alex Rins that's that's an exciting combo. Cannot wait to see how they work together. A very long combination as well for Suzuki after the failure with Iannone. And I'd say that Iannone has been riding pretty well. <laughs> but I can't wait to see what he can do on, I think it's the Priya. He's near alongside Alicia Spargo. There's so many exciting combinations. Of course, Lorenzo and Mark Marquez is perhaps the most exciting at all prospect, but you also have Dobby with Petrucci. Be interested to see how Petrucci does on all the official works. Ducati has been unofficially on that with Promac. And maybe just like an update or two behind the works machine. But it's been on a current, current year machinery compared to his teammates on year old machinery and I can't wait to see what Jack Miller can do then on current year machinery as well at Premac and then he's got Francesco Bagnaia alongside him who's meant to be the next great Italian hope on that Premac but on year old machinery you can see it'd be impressive as Jack Miller was at first on that machinery so cannot wait the next season MotoGP it Pretty exciting. I, I just can't wait for this season to end, to be honest. Now that, yeah, Marcus has won it. We know that. 
there's a scramble for second. It's all about who can be consistent in the second half of the season. As Martin is right on the back of McDonald. Just half a second back. We thought McDonald was going to race away with this, but been kept in check by Martin. As, oh, he almost loses it through the left. Just going to upset his run. Into the right hander. Will Martin have a look? Doesn't look like he's not close enough. It's the Spaniard. Oh yeah, MotoGP next season should be very exciting. Just like Moto2 is this year. Of course, Moto3 is always exciting. Uh, as well as seeing young up and coming riders battle their hearts out. Try and make it through the system. Again, like Moto2, if you're not out in two or three years we might see you there for quite a long time like you see with Jack and Cornfell, John McPhee and we kind of know who's going to going to step up then who's the more talented if they do does last a couple of seasons in Moto3 compared to the rest so I guess the system works that way but as I said it's a bit disappointing you can't just make careers in these classes anymore like they used to be able to for over 50 years. Of course, then Mel McDonald could rack up the world championships. As on his year par debut, he comes out the final corner through the start, finish straight, and wins. His first race on board a Honda as well at Moto 3 level. What a victory. What a ride. What a weekend for him. As McDonald won ahead of Martin by just three tenths a second. Look at DJ Antonio almost grabbed the fastest lap and was just seven tenths behind. So McDonald free the Grissini pair. That's a very exciting prospect. With Bezeki in fourth, Kenet recovered to a top five ahead of Mino. Antonelli, Bastianini grabbed eighth in the end. And Rodrigo Ramirez grabbed the top ten. Great result for the Spaniard ahead of Della Porta. Kornfeld, Suzuki, Otel, and Arbolono. Going to find a point ahead of Albert Arena. So Alonso Lopez down in 17th. McPhee in 18th. Mesa ran out the top 20. Lua Din in 25th. Didn't make up any places in the race. Loy in 20th. Masaki at the back. So the Riders Championship is how you would expect. And look at these career rewards. Getting towards that first rider state. There's lots of development points earned for the bike as well. Remember that's returned. After you saw in the second half of the season, the Avinta machine not really getting developed. And lots of reputation earned as well for McDonald's. As in MotoGP, Marquez after dark is just as quick as Marquez in the day. He won ahead of Dovi and Rossi. In Moto2, it's Baldassai ahead of Pacini. Well done to the veteran. And that's Marquez in third. So let's look at bike development then. As we've got the engine, brake, suspension, frame and aerodynamics. So where do we begin? Of course it's going to be the engine. So we've got 6,000 development points. You can only develop one thing as we see all of these components quite the same amount of points for the first level so for mcdonald's let's begin with the engine and let's begin with the power shall we because we really struggle with the power near vintage machine or should we start with the traction again we might just kind of play off against each other so I think we got to go with, let's go with power. So that's the first slot complete. And next time out, Mayo will be heading to Argentina, has the championship leader for the first time in Red Bull Rookie Cup or in Moto3. First time in his career. He'll be the one to chase down. Manda Tomas Del Rio Hondo Circuit. Can Martin and Co do it? Sam Fortune and find out next time.